I'm joined by Martin Lindstrom, who is the author of the recently published Small Data, The Tiny Clues That Uncover Huge Trends. Thank you for joining us, Martin. Pleasure. Martin, tell us first of all, what is small data? Well, small data is what I call seemingly insignificant observations we make in people's lives. I mean, we all leave clues behind ourselves. The way I sit, the way I place my shoes, the way I hang my painting, or even the picture I shoot of myself and put up on my Facebook account. And one would think, well, that's just ordinary signals. No, it's not. And because those signals disclose your subconscious behavior. And remember, 85% of everything we do every day is subconscious. Uh, I mean, I'll just ask you a question uh, and be honest now, right? But think about this. If you have a remote control mm -hmm. and it's flat for battery, mm -hmm. uh, are you the type of person who's squeezing extra hard <laughs> to squeeze the last battery out? Absolutely. <laughs> I've doing, been doing that all month. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an example about our subconscious behavior. Now, if I asked you in interviews why you're doing it, I'm sure you would have a really interesting answer which has nothing to do with reality. And that's really the dilemma with uh, research today, that most of the stuff we do is subconscious. Mm. Now, big data is really the opposite. Okay, how so? Well, big data is all about what I define as rational data. Mm -hmm. It's all about uh, creating the correlation, connecting the dots. Uh, where small data is all about causation, the reason why, the hypothesis. So, so are they in a fight or can you actually combine them? How do well, you, do you have to live with both of them, really, because how would you find a needle in a haystack without having a hypothesis of where to go? You know, is your theory I want to go in the bottom because it's more heavy and therefore I'm going to find it? Or is it that we are in an, an airspace where actually it would float up to the top? That hypothesis is based on you doing preliminary research and that is small data. Uh, the problem today is that most of the big data analyses are based on engineers or programmers or analytics people sitting in a room with their own little hypothesis in mind without having any clue about what the reality is. And they just try to do a random search among all these billions of numbers. But what if you actually went out to the reality and the reality was how come we squeeze you know, thicker or no, better on a remote control when it's you know, without a battery in it and then that becomes a hypothesis for you to figure out what your true behavior is, then you turn it around and that is the issue today with small data and big data. So, so, so how do you actually turn this into profit? Well, at the end of the day, uh, what your goal always should be is to figure out the imbalances in people's lives. So we're all out of balances. It may be I feel overweight, it may be I feel I have no friends, it may be I feel uh, that actually I want to be stimulated because my self-confidence level is pretty low. Um, those imbalances represent a gap and that gap represents the space for a brand or for a need. And really, in the end of the day, that's what your focus is with small data. So as you search around uh, and you find those opportunities, you actually are finding completely new innovation opportunities out there. And big data, yes, for sure they will find something. The problem is everyone has access to the same numbers, they're mining them the same way, and guess what? They come up with the same conclusion, where small data are so specific, so detailed, and really in many ways they're difficult to find at first, that quite often you are really armed with a secret tool to find something almost no one else will find. Mm. I think I need to run out and get some new batteries for my remote. Thank you for joining us, Martin. Pleasure. Great advice. Thank you.